Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 16, Friendship University. So, should we start with you? And I have a feeling you have a lot of stuff stacked up to talk about this episode. <laughs> well, it's Flim and Flam, so obviously it had to be a scam. But also, that's a lot how universities... <laughs> feel like they work sometimes because I had to go into the student store and buy paper for my tests. You know, those score sheets with the bubbles, the A, B, C, D? In certain places charge for tests too. You have to go and purchase the test or purchase the right to take the test. Which I can understand for certain things it helps to, it helps to improve the quality of the people who take the test. Because there's a barrier to entry, so the people who are taking it are going to make pretty darn sure that they can pass it. I was just waiting for the catch on Flim and Flam. I was like, I know the catch is there, and it's something obvious, but we're not seeing it. Also, man, do I want to kick the living heck out of uh, Naysay. Just, he oozes the stuff that I don't like. I'm like, I'm going to, you're going to, ooh. Yes, close-minded prejudice. I wonder how we're going to solve the problem of him. Well, considering he's so pony-centric, how is the problem going to even arise? Because he's never going to leave Equestria because he wouldn't want to encounter anything that wasn't a pony. So, unless he goes out to the Crystal Empire and gets tainted by the remains of King Sombra, or becomes the new Pony of Shadows... Possible? Well, I think the Shadows themselves are still trapped in that alternate dimension. Hmm. That hasn't stopped villains before. No, no it hasn't. I mean, death and... I mean, death and other things really stops heroes or villains. This means they get creative. Yes, very creative. Killed Goku multiple times. Let the series end. Not even the creator could get rid of Goku. Like, I'm literally the god of this universe. I've killed him. But I can't let him die. I'm broke. Or, finally, I killed him. Everything's good. Why is there a show on TV with my characters? I didn't approve this. Of course, now we have all the other stuff with Dragon Ball Z. Super... And the video games. And everything. Just crazy. Oh my goodness. Rarity. You could be way better at disguises. Also, that name is like something out of Friendship is Witchcraft, the sleepover episode. It's bad enough I admit I watched the episode. Because <laughs> basically in that episode, Twilight is forcing those two to hear her fan fiction. Oh. You know, with Scarity and Applesack. Ooh. <laughs> but no, Planity and an eye patch and a piece of paper with a fake cutie mark are not enough to disguise the fact that she is one of only five alicorns known to Equestria. I mean, really, there should have been some more clothes on her, just like you, Rarity. Something to hide the wings, you know, something. Or hide the wings or the horn. Pick one. You know, a tall hat like Star Swirl over the horn. Style her hair differently so it's sticking out over the... You know, give her a, um, not a pompadour, but a... Mohawk? No. Oh, swirly, like, uh, wooden sword Ryu? Yeah, that's who I was actually thinking of. Yeah, it was not a good disguise at all. And the fact that Rarity thought it was a good disguise, and that apparently it worked on the average school pony are both very disturbing. What was also really funny is the only reason Rarity's disguise works because they didn't recognize her. Rarity who? Because they don't know her, because they didn't have any direct interaction with her. She wasn't the target of the Apple Family Farm scandal or the health tonic, and she wasn't one of the ones chosen to go to Las Pegasus. So they haven't had direct interaction with her. And a little bit of a red herring there, because at first I thought, her showing off the element of generosity by doing that nice stuff for the teacher. I'm like, are they just making an entire school of kiss-ups? Hmm. Who will all do everything for their teachers to be the star pupil? 
because that is a common way to take advantage of students' trust is to get them to do things outside of the curriculum. When I was teacher's aide, I used to call and make uh, gym appointments for my art instructor. Also, that whole scene with the first blackmail, I was like, Twilight, why aren't you grabbing the photo? Your power's stronger than theirs. You would literally be able to snatch the phone and go, thank you, rip, gone. They didn't even have time to magically duplicate it. Because, you know, it was a Polaroid, so they only have the one photo. You can blast magic from your horn that can disintegrate solid objects. You can't set a photo on fire. Jeez. Plot holes. Yay. Oh, but no, she was too stunned to think of any of this. She has good reflexes. Also, I'm surprised she didn't recognize any of the lesson plans. That's kind of what I was expecting. Even abridged version, she should recognize that I remember coming up with this idea last week or, you know, something like that. Because apparently it actually came from her book, so she should recognize it. Whether it's the lesson plan she submitted to Naysayer or it's the journal that they published and the public went crazy over the storylines and missed out on the friendship portion, she should still recognize it. And the way what she was reading in the office sounded, it sounded more like it came from her actual lesson plans. So how did Flem and Flam get a hold of her curriculum book from the accreditation? I just had a strange idea. Wow. Okay, you know how we don't trust that pony that we actually saw in this episode? You mean Naysayer? No. Oh, yeah. The Rook one. Yeah, Cozy Glow. I thought about Cozy Glow having given Flim and Flam the lesson plan as well. Because how did she, like, get in there and prove her trust and stuff like that? I still say she was tr tricking them. She was playing them in that episode. I still say she was playing them and if she took the book and gave it to Flem and Flam that was actually one of my first thoughts when this started before I, we ever knew it was Flem and Flam I'm like oh Cozy Glow's been selling the lesson plans to earn a few bits or she actually works for Flem and Flam or she may work for Nase. there's a bunch of things going on there that could actually be theories yeah yeah but I almost forgot that I was pinning this on Cozy Glow because we conveniently had Flim and Flam for me to rail against. Exactly! Because Twilight even asked, how did they get a hold of the book? And Cozy Glow's right there. That's what got me about this. Like, she seems to be more personally involved with the principal and the leader of the school or, you know, all this stuff. She seems to be close in there and she was talking to Rarity about the sewing machines. Hmm. Maybe she was actually like, you're going to get rid of these, right? Can I sell them? Hmm. I like that idea. Mainly because it would make me feel better about that episode. <laughs> yeah, I still don't trust her. It's kind of like a Shiro in Voltron. Like, something's up. Except it's not quite so obvious. It's mainly because they drew her so sugary, syrupy, sweet. That's what makes me like, ooh. Yeah, always fear the cute ones. Quite. Mega Tokyo taught me that lesson. Do I have a shirt? No, I don't have a shirt. Y you don't have fear the cute ones. You have tortured artists. And most of our audience goes, Mega Tokyo? What's that? Web comic. Look it up. Enjoy the ride. There's that sense of impending doom again. Oh, I think we just killed Fred's servers. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of power. Send my legion of fans off to tackle some website because I accidentally mentioned it. But no, I'm probably only going to introduce Sasami, Chan, and Fan of the Gourmet. <laughs> Enjoy! It is fun. We promise if you click back to the beginning, the art does get better. <laughs> it does. Not that it was bad to begin with, but he's made so much progress over the years. He's making a visual novel, too, if you're interested. Someday. <laughs> but back to the episode at hand... Those were some fun theories. I'm like, ooh, I like these. <laughs> but yeah, that just hit me. It's like, wait a minute. Cozy Glow is in this episode, not just as a background pony. Hmm. Also, what is a student doing picking up the mail from the mail pony? That should be going to an official staff member. And there was another 
pony I remember in the beginning of the episode that I recognized. I can't remember who it was. Hmm. I don't know. They were showing the student six reading over the flyer. That would have been very interesting for the student six to end up there, especially since the school is so pony centric. Ooh. Yeah. Oof. Fun. Also, there are lots of ways to learn friendship. Twilight School can't absorb all the students from Friendship University. Star Swirl, there are other ways to tell people they can learn about friendship. For one thing, Star Swirl, you learned a lot about friendship just traveling around. If the lesson plans were taken from Twilight's book, why not just get copies of the book? Also, Flim and Flam giving back all the money and shutting down the school why not take the rest of the worksheets that they already have printed and give them to everybody? Because putting the idea that you can only learn about friendship through a school is very limiting. Opportunities for friendship are everywhere. It's just popping in my head. Also, I'm waiting for the episode where Flim and Flam have to work with the main six to solve a problem. Not just the way we did it in the... Um, Las Pegasus episode. Mm, but like an, a season finale kind of thing. Where we have to, the main six as a whole have to trust those guys. And actually learn a lesson, not just, oh, we end up with this resort now. We're good. <laughs> kind of like if Team Rocket ever got it in their heads, like, you know, if you guys actually did good things, you succeed more often. <laughs> yeah. Because every episode where they did something good, everything worked out for them. But the moment they decided, like, oh, we can do this. <laughs> or boom. But I mean, they still have the resort. It's like. Wow, that's creative. You guys create a school in order to fundraise to expand the resort. Yeah, can't you just figure out some way to tweak some rides or use a little bit of money to buy another ride, then use the money from that ride to fund something else or so on and so forth. I'm sorry, it's a basically a Las Vegas style resort. It's a money pit. Yeah, like create another casino. There's profits for you. <laughs> Add some new machines. Tweak the odds on the machines you already have. So there had to be more to it of why they went with this plan as opposed to another plan. I'm thinking they decided to go with it because they could attract people because based on the popularity of their friendship school, Twilight Sparkle's a princess. Use the princess cachet again because that's come up a few times since she's been a princess. And also why send the flyers to the other university, um, the other school? Because they were mailed to them. Yeah, they were mailed to the other schools, so they wanted to take all the existing students. Though based on our current theory, maybe they weren't actually mailed. Because Cozy Glow had them and said, I also got these and I'm not sure what to do with them. And they weren't in envelopes and they didn't have any type of postal markings. So it's entirely possible that if they did come to the school, they may have come in a packet addressed to her and she opened it up with some instructions. Mm-hmm. This is interesting it would be really nice if this is actually what they're going for because it would be nice for the writers to hide something like this for once and not just oh look there's starlight glimmer in the background of these episodes because <laughs> this is actual interaction she's someone that's suspicious in case i was a little confusing i'm referring back to the previous season where starlight glimmer was spying on everyone to eventually get revenge on Twilight Sparkle for the whole, you destroyed my town and she alters time. Because in that season, you saw her in the background of a lot of episodes peeking out of stuff. If you paid attention, I'm like, oh, that's good and everything. But I like the fact that she's like right in our face. Cozy Glow was like right in our face. Also, the return of Naysayer before the finale. Though, be interesting to find out what Naysayer thinks about this school getting shut down because mm. he fully accredited it and then like two seconds later it's going out of business whoops also did he fully review and see that they were charging for the worksheets did that fall within accreditation guidelines because at one point naysayer says i don't need to see anything more i'm giving you full approval mm. so did he finish correctly going through the accreditation process or is naysayer blinded by the fact that he wanted a pony centric friendship school and therefore he was going to support the first one that came up even though supposedly he's totally by the book he probably was totally by the book 
And then he found out about a school that may teach creatures other than ponies and his prejudice got involved. And so now he's like, eh, this is close enough. Because we need to be teaching ponies these same lessons. And I can't send ponies to that unaccredited school because it has creatures at it. And just to point out something, yes, friendship can be used as a weapon. Absolutely, positively. But the way he brings it up as potentially a weapon, I'm like, eh. And we're not just talking about rainbows and lasers. No, we're talking about the actual use of friendship with someone being a false friend and using that friendship for manipulation and harm. Either gain or um, eventual harm. Because you can actually use it for gain and not harm the person until they find out. Because then it's a betrayal of trust. The real question is, since this is brought up now, how are we going to see friendship used as a weapon? Other than the whole magical laser beam thing. Because we need to see a little bit more subtle, you know, real world version of it. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm going to say Closey Glow. Well, yeah, because she's ingratiated herself so much. Friendship as a weapon. Though if that's the case, I vote on Starlight being the one to figure her out. That's a very good point. Also, the more I say um, Cozy Glow is the person, the more I think about a pup named Scooby-Doo. And how they're always going, red herring! No, it was not red herring. Oh yes, our very first adventure, when it was actually red herring. <laughs> so anything else you'd like to go over, or should we wrap this up? Mm. Oh, was it just me, or did the pony on the raft with Star Swirl look a bit like Tree Hugger? It's hard to tell in a helmet. That's the other person that was, that was, that was trying to uh, talk about at the beginning, that was a reference. It was Tree Hugger. Yes, yeah, so Tree Hugger. And then I'm like, that means we should probably also recognize the pony that he was uh, doing the mountain climb with. Hmm. And since I don't readily recognize them, I'm going to say maybe someone from Starlight's Old Village. That or someone who helped Pinkie Pie? Quite possible. Though it could just be some random pony because I totally do not recognize the artistic pony. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments where the artistic pony is from. Yeah, I don't recognize him either, though he seems familiar. He may just be drawn in a familiar style or referencing an artistic human. Possible. We'd have to look at that painting of the boat, see if it references anything. Well, if you look at the painting, it's interesting how there almost appear to be holes in the sails. There were holes in the sails, and I think there were some holes in the boat. Yeah, so a lot of artistic interpretation there. And I love how many postcards Twilight has gotten from Star Swirl. Yeah, I was waiting for him to come back in. But I love how many postcards are up in her office. I'm like, that's cool and everything, but if you put them up with the picture side out, then you can't read them. I know it's a good way to show there's a lot of them, but it's almost like you need them in a photo album so you can flip through them and see the front and the back. And I do like the fact that if you use magic, you don't have to worry about tape sticking to your fingers when you're doing something like that. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Because that's, that's what I have fingernails for. Well, one of the reasons. Because that would be so handy. Because there's been plenty of times where like, I've ruined pieces of tape because it stuck to my finger just right. I was like, oh, oh, oh. then it folds over on itself. And you're like, oh, I can't peel that apart. And then I'm covered in tape. And then there's me. I, I mean, I took art classes and I was usually covered in tape by the end of them. She happens to come to my classes at one point. And uh, helps me do some stuff. She's completely clean. Me, I've got paint all over me. And I'm like, what? Like, were we even in the same room? I remember you being here. What, were you a hologram? How are you still clean? It's like that scene from Turner and Hooch. Guy comes over, helps Lady paint her house. She is completely covered in paint. And he is spotless in his uniform. So, are we finished with this episode? Yes, I just need to go back to the beginning and go over those things. Gotcha. Well, here it comes. The outro. Any time now. And, it's, nope, still, still not here yet. It's, wait for it. W wait for it. It's going, there it is. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 8, Episode 16, Friendship University. Oh. Hey, you hit the skip button, right? You didn't actually wait for the outro. So, here it is, your uniquely recorded for every episode outro. So, we had an episode. Did you like it? There's a like button. Are you a subscriber? 
there's a subscribe button. Do you want to tell us how absolutely crazy us and our theories are? There's a place for comments. Please keep it clean and be mostly nice. <laughs> oh, that way we don't have to go through and edit and spam filter and all that fun stuff. Looking for more stuff to watch? We've been at this a while. There's a ton of other videos if you're new to us. If you're not new to us, you probably missed the early stuff, but it's still there. The YouTube hasn't taken it down. Go back and watch it for a laugh. It's great. <laughs> oh, and once you're ready to leave YouTube, you can find more of Lux's art in other places on the internet. Check links. He takes commissions. Again, check the links. Also, monetary consideration. We have a Patreon and a coffee. Patreon starts at a dollar, which gets you monthly voting and sketch rights. And coffee works in increments of three, one-time use, no long-term commitments. We understand. You know, it, it's hard to commit to something, especially something new. And relatively new in the links, I jumped in on the Tumblr game. No, I do not have artwork. You guys don't want to see me draw, trust me. But I like deals, and I like hacking the system legally. So check that out. It's actually a corner of Lux's Tumblr. Yes, I'm being that lazy about it. Like I said, hacking the system. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive and the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.